Traffic was over to 582. One of the first things to consider when being dispatched to a call of this type is look at what the MDC says and ensure that you have the right resources responding to your incident. Call type may be an injury, but it's actually a cliff rescue. Or it may say traffic collision, but the text lends you to believe that it's actually a traffic collision over the side. Get those appropriate resources coming early and balance it up to the correct call type. Some of the things that we want to add would be local search and rescue teams. They have local knowledge. They bring additional equipment that we may not have on the initial engine company. We also want to start a camp crew. A camp crew can be your haul team. More importantly, they can assist with access to the vehicle. LA 82. 82. New uh, contact uh, sheriff's department. Make sure we have a uh, Monto search rescue responding. And can we get a camp crew? You may also want to consider naming the incident and requesting a comp plan early on, even prior to arriving on scene due to some of the long ETAs it'll take to get to incidents of this type, and along with that, move-ups. Uh, continue some of those specialized resources. Those truck companies are going to come in, they'll provide you with additional personnel. They'll bring Stokes basket, additional equipment like brake racks. They can do picket systems, provide uh, extrication equipment that may be needed over the side. The copter can come in and provide a good aerial recon of the, the location, search for additional victims. They may be able to affect uh, inserting a paramedic down to the scene quicker than a ground-based uh, operation. Uh, they can potentially hoist the victim back to the aircraft and take them directly to the trauma center. And at night, they can also assist with uh, additional lighting. Uh, USAR, the rescue tender, has a capstan and a high directional that they can use to help with the edge transition and help with your haul team. And they can also be your RIC team. They can be your contingent plan if something in your primary or alternate plan uh, doesn't go as, as intended. The heavy rescue can provide an excellent artificial high directional as well as uh, stabilizing vehicles that may be uh, you know, unstable on the slope and, and reduce the exposure to your firefighters working. So now you're that first uh, arriving unit. Uh, if we're lucky, we'll have a reporting party at the scene who will flag you down and, and get you looking in the right direction. If not, you may have to search the roadway in the area and look for evidence of a vehicle that's gone over the side, broken brush, fresh skid marks, debris in the roadway. Uh, if you do have a reporting party, ask them some questions. You know, did they actually see the vehicle go over the side? Have they heard anybody yelling or screaming for help? Uh, all that can be valuable information. And then when you're done asking them questions, go ahead and ask them to move that out of the way. Get your bystander vehicles, uh, law enforcement vehicles, other agency vehicles, get them out of the way and, and control your work area so that arriving apparatus can be placed in a, in a location that will allow you to, to build the most efficient system. Make that initial size up to LA over the jurisdictional TRO frequency. Give them a corrected location, an estimated distance of how far over the side, how many victims if you know that information, and whether it's a low or high angle slope. You know, consider keeping one lane of the roadway open so that you'll have access to both sides of your scene. And that may be important for a placement of the ambulance, a placement of uh, additional resources. Once your vehicle's been placed, make sure you secure and chalk the vehicle and start uh, looking at donning some of your personal protective equipment, like your helmet, eye protection, brush jacket, brush pants, sturdy boots, gloves, your harness, you have a radio, a whistle, and a flashlight. When you start looking to set anchors on the vehicles, remember we wanna uh, use caution with using wheels or tires because we've just responded all the way up to the scene or brakes and wheels are probably hot. Be sure not to use an open, tow hook. Use only closed eyes. A three bite anchor is quick but just be careful to ensure you're not tri-loading your carabiner. In the past with under significant load it is possible that a carabiner could be opened if it's being loaded other than along the spine. So that's one thing that we like about a Wrap 3 Pull 2 anchor is that it keeps the loading along the spine of the carabiner. Okay when anchoring to the axle of the vehicle Ensure that you uh, stay away from anything sharp, any heat, and stay away from the brake line. 
And when anchoring to the bumper, uh, use the closed tow hooks, uh, closed tow hooks that don't have any sharp damage from having been pulled on with a chain. Remember, other anchors may include large trees or rocks, and always consider the need for edge protection. Now you consider, are we going to lower or are we going to repel? If you're by yourself, you're going to have to rig for repel. If you're that initial engine company and you have your, your crew of three, you may be able to consider uh, lowering your rescuer down. So as you're rigging for your repel, in this case, you want to anticipate what's going to happen next when additional responders arrive. So you're going to go ahead and, and rig your lowering system, but you're going to place a prusik around the rope to, to keep the weight on the prusik and allow uh, subsequent arriving resources the ability to untie your knot and place their system in, in its place. One of the things that you can do to help that uh, subsequent arriving unit is to keep some several feet of slack up on the roadway prior to tying your knot. By keeping the extra slack, it provides them with some rope to be able to attach to with their system to ultimately pull you back up. Now as you rig your eight plate for repel, you ensure that you place a prusik on the line above. Since there is no belay, you need to have a self belay, in which case you, you're able to manage the prusik with one hand and control your descent with the other on the way down make sure you search for victims on the way down. It's possible that a victim may have been ejected from the vehicle and, uh, and not right where the vehicle is located. And remember, don't kick rocks on the way down. Uh, you don't want to be sending debris down to your patient. Okay, when you, if it is a vehicle over the side, be sure to check all sides of the vehicle, including the inside of the vehicle and the trunk. You also want to look below the vehicle to see if anyone's been ejected and rolled down below. Uh, if we think it's possible that it, this is a, uh, a just a dumped stolen vehicle, then we, one of the things you can look for would be if there's any heat on the vehicle. Does it seem like it's been driven? Are there any lights on? Is there any blood in the interior? And then document the license plate and the VIN number on the vehicle so that law enforcement can determine if the vehicle has been reported stolen or not. As the next arriving unit goes on scene, you're going to secure the vehicle. Captain can get out and give a, a quick safety briefing and, and initial assignments. Some of those assignments could be uh, the rigger, who's going to run the main line, who's going to run the belay. We'll need to assign a safety officer. Remember that safety needs to be somebody who's competent with rope rescue as systems and is also not involved in building portions of the system so that they have a fresh set of eyes. Captain looks over the side to assess what exactly is going on, check on his rescuer that's already over the side for an updated size up and a follow-up report to LA. Topside folks can start placing edge protection. A, a haul runner is an excellent piece of edge protection to protect that rope for when it comes back up. The belayer starts getting equipment ready to rig for the belay. We try to keep the belay uh, close to the edge without going through a change of direction. Now, and given the scenario we're showing here, you would need to send a subsequent rescuer down with the belay to get it down to the scene. When you rig your belay, be sure to incorporate the use of a load-releasing hitch and a tandem prusik belay. Remember to use two prusiks of differing sizes with the short prusik closest to the anchor. And whenever we rig something, we're going to ensure that all the carabiners are locked and then we physically check to ensure that we've locked them. A quick review of belay technique. On the way down, you want to maintain a bend of rope so that you can feel the, the load being pulled from you rather than just giving them a bunch of extra slack. You want to always maintain tension in the system between you and the anchor so there's no slack. On the way back up, you're going to ensure that the pressics maintain tension. So if it's a vehicle over the side, you'll likely need additional rescuers to assist with packaging the patient in the litter uh, using the approved lashing that you find in department manuals. If you're using a fro frozen climber type scenario where 
it's just a, a person with minor injuries that's down over the side needs help up and one of your first things is to get them into a harness. You can use a commercial harness that some uh, resources carry in the department. Most of us carry that two inch adjustable strap webbing that we can use to place them into a harness. We can use a blue webbing to do a, a hasty chest harness and get that victim attached to your system. Remember, we do not attach victims to our own harness. We don't want the weight of the victim trying to pull our harness off. We want to attach the victim to the system. And one of the best ways to do that is to attach a prussic uh, in line on the rope above you and attach the victim to those prussics. That gives you the ability to adjust. Riggers on the top can determine which type of system is going to be the most efficient way to get the rescuers and victims back up. Remember, a two-to-one mechanical advantage system can be a quick and easy system, particularly on a low angle slope. A three-to-one mechanical advantage is our bread and butter for this type of operation because you can do unlimited resets to get them up to the top side. Other specialized systems may include a piggyback system. The piggyback system would work well in this scenario because it easily connects to that several extra feet of slack that that initial rescuer left up on the top of the road. Or a system in which you need to pass a knot. When you're setting up your systems, try to ensure you use different color ropes so that your folks down over the side who may not know which rope is the main belay can tell you if they need tension on the red rope or slack on the blue rope. Remember, the bigger your haul field, the fewer number of resets you'll have to do with your system. Part of building your system will be to take out the initial rescuer's knot and place a pulley in its place. Hall team, remember it's a smooth, steady walk and be sure to use loud and clear commands. Belayer needs to keep up and maintain tension in the belay while the load is coming up. Notice how he keeps the anchor under tension as well. Use as many resets as needed until the victim comes up. After all the victims have been rescued and before departing the incident, you want to have one of your personnel mark the vehicle with a bright colored X in a visible location. This will keep uh, additional resources from tomorrow's shift from having to come out and do the same thing on a vehicle that you've already searched and cleared. So this concludes our review of basic rope systems, carry maintenance, and initial engine company considerations. If you have any additional questions or comments, you can contact the USAR coordinator at Technical Operations.